So we are going to talk about the law of signs today. But before we start, I want to remind you guys of two properties. I want to talk about what it means to substitute, and then I want to talk about isolating a variable. So these are some kind of algebraic concepts that I want to review because we're going to use them in the lesson we're talking about today. So when you isolate a variable, for example, if you have something like this, x equals 3 over y, and I want to isolate the y, what does that mean? You want to get the y by itself, right? So if I want to get the y by itself, what would I have to do here? I need to, I can't multiply by 3 because 3 is on the top. So I can multiply by the reciprocal. If I multiply by the reciprocal, what would that be? Y over 3. And then what do I have to multiply by over here? Y over 3. So what happens to this? X, Y over 3 equals, what's this? 1, because those just go away. Now what can I multiply by? Because that didn't really get us any closer to having y by itself. Now I can multiply by 3, and that would get rid of the 3. So what does that leave me with here? x, y is equal to 3. And then how would I isolate y? By what? x, x. So y ends up equaling 3 over x. OK, so isolating a variable means doing whatever algebra, whatever inverse operations you need to do so that you can get that variable by itself. Good. OK, the other thing I want to talk about is substitution. What does substitution mean? take place of something, right? But when you take something's place, the assumption is whatever you're putting in for something else is equivalent to that thing. What does that mean when I say it's equivalent to? It equals to. So when we have, when you have a substitute teacher or if you have a substitute, let's not do substitute teacher, let's do a substitute in like a basketball game, okay? So if you have a substitute in a basketball game, does anyone in here play basketball? All right, what about soccer? Okay, Luis. Give me a position in soccer. Center, defensive, mid? That seems like a lot going on. All right, center and defensive, mid would be the middle defenseman. Okay. So you have to have certain skills to be that player, right? Like those skills would be different than, say, a forward. All right, those skills might be different than a forward, right? So let's say you were a center defensive mid and Cecilia were a forward and you got hurt and you had to go out of the game. Would it make sense to substitute Cecilia in for you? Oh, is it kind of like... No, why not? Because it's not the same thing. So you would need somebody who played that position to go in there, right? So again, we need something equivalent. Ash, what were you going to say? Like if you have a play, then you have the understudy for the person. Yes, exactly. So if you have, what's a play? Like Romeo and Juliet, right? So if you have Romeo and Juliet, and then Juliet has an understudy, that means that that understudy does what? The same thing as Juliet. They would be able to do the same thing as Juliet, right? So they have all of Juliet's lines memorized so that if something happens to the actress who's playing Juliet, like uh, she trips, falls, and breaks a leg, then the understudy for Juliet would substitute in for her place. And the assumption would be that she would know all of the lines and everything she needed to do. You wouldn't put Romeo's understudy in there because then you'd have two Romeos, right? Which would be a different play. It might be interesting, but probably not what you want to do, right? So when you're substituting, you want to plug in stuff that's equivalent. So in this equation right here, y plus x equals 8, if I know that x is equal to 2 plus y, what can I do with that in my first equation? I can take out this x, and instead of writing this, what could I plug in? 2 plus y, because that's equal to x. So my new equation would look like what? equals 8. Very good. Okay, and then you could solve it because now you just have one variable left. All right, so that would give you 2y plus what? Equals, and then what? 2y equals 
6. Good. And then y must equal what? Good. Y equals 3. So we use substitution to isolate a variable when we have equations that have multiple variables. All right. So those are things that you should have done in algebra. They're going to come into play with what we're doing today. All right. So we are going to talk about the law of signs. As a reminder, this h right here is called the altitude of this triangle. How do you know that it's the altitude? It touches the C, which is called the longest leg of a right triangle, which is the hypotenuse. So it touches the hypotenuse, and it forms a right angle. So we would say it's perpendicular to the hypotenuse, right? So that is perpendicular to the hypotenuse. So H is the altitude. Now, let's say we're talking about angle A. Let's say you're talking about angle A. What is sine of angle A? What is sine of angle A? Look around your room. Sine is what? So, which means opposite over hypotenuse. So angle A, what's opposite angle A? H. And then what's the hypotenuse B? So sine of A is H over B. What is sine of B? H over A. Because the hypotenuse of this triangle is A. Very good. OK. So. What do you notice about these equations? Both of them have what in common? H. H. They both have the letter H in common. So what I want to do is we're going to figure out this thing called the law of signs. But to do that, we need to isolate the H so that we can be talking about the same thing. So if I want to isolate the H, what do I have to get rid of on this sine A one? I need to get rid of B. How do I get rid of a divided by B? Multiply by B. If I multiply by b over here, what do I do over here? OK. What happens to these b's? Those are gone, and what do you have left? h is isolated. Good. Can I do anything with this? No. I can't do anything with it, so I just rewrite it as b times sine a. So b times sine a is equal to h. Over here, how would I isolate h? Multiply by a, and if I multiply by A here, what do I do here? A. Times A. And that gives me what? A. a times sine B equals H. If they are both equal to H, what can you say about this and this? If they both equal H, then they must what? equal to each other. They have to be equal to each other. So for example, I think that we did this like way back at the beginning of the year, but we said something like, if I am, the, is anybody in here 5'6"? Five, 5'6". Six? Five, six. Five, six. Oh, five, you're 5'6"? Five, and you're 5'6"? Five, OK. If I am the same height as Jesse, and Jesse is the same height as Alda, what can you say about Alda and I? We are also the same height, right? So if two things are equal to the same thing, then they must also be equal to each other, all right? So then I can write a new equation. B times sine A is equal to A times sine B. All right, now. This is all good, all well and good, but that doesn't really help us that much. So instead of writing it like this, I want to write it as a ratio. And I'm going to write it as a ratio like this. OK? So instead of, I'm going to go back for a second. Instead of saying b times sine a, I'm going to divide by sine a. And I want to get divide by sine a on this side. What happens to it here? Cancels out. And what do I have left? B is equal to a times sine b over sine a. But I also want to get rid of this sine b. Just bear with me for a second, because you don't actually need to know all this stuff. This is just how we get to the ratio. which is ultimately going to get us to this ratio. B over sine B is equal to A 
over sine A. All right, so that is called the law of sines. And this part, all that stuff we just did, is just how we got there. And you can care about it. It's interesting. That's where it comes from. But what's important to know is this. All right? So the sine of angle A over A is equal to the sine of angle B over B. And it's also equal to the sine of angle C over side C. All right, now, what do you notice about these two A's? They match up, exactly. The A goes over the A, the B goes over the B, and the C goes over the C. But what's different about those two A's? One is capital and one is lowercase, right? So one is uppercase, one is lowercase. What are the uppercase? The angles. The uppercase are the angles, which makes sense because you don't take the sine of a side, you take the sine of an angle. So the sine of angle A over little a. What's the relationship there? Opposite. Sine of angle B over little b. What's the relationship there? Opposite. Spoiler alert. What's this relationship? Good. Sine of angle C over its opposite. So when you're setting up the law of sines, you're setting up a ratio where you put the sine of the angle over its opposite side. Okay, so for example, if I give you this triangle, let's call this A, B, and C. Give me a number, any number. 32. 32. All right, so that's 32, 58. And this is three, five, seven. All right. So if I want to fill this into the law of sines ratio, the sine of 32 would go over what? Why? That's the opposite side. All right. Sine of 58 would go over what? Three. And the sine of 90 would go over what? 7. All right? So the law of sines is a ratio between the angle and its opposite side, where if you take the sine of an angle over its opposite side, that's equal to the sine of all the other angles over their opposite side. So really, this is right here what you need to know. And the reason you need to know it is because it will let you figure out missing parts in a different way. So before, we have needed a lot of information. Here, all we need is two angles and a side or two sides and an angle. And so we're going to look at how to solve a problem like this. So what do we have in this problem? We have problem, or I'm sorry, we have angle E, we have angle D, and we have an angle F. Do I know what that angle F is? No? Could I figure it out? How? Add these two together, and then I subtract it from 180. Why is that? All triangles add up to 180. So my recommendation for you whenever you're doing any problem like this is to find all of your angles. Okay? Find all of your angles, if possible, which you will be able to do as long as there's two angles in the triangle. Okay. Now, I want to figure out which leg? DF. DF. So I'm going to mark DF X. That's the one I'm looking for. So can anybody tell me, in a ratio or in a proportion, how many legs and sides do I need? Do I need all three or just two? Just two. Because when you're setting up a proportion, you only need one fraction equal to another. We could do all three, but it's not going to help us that much. So I know that x, df, is opposite which angle? 32. So I'm going to use that one for sure, because that's the unknown that I'm looking for. So that's going to be sine 32 over x is equal to which other angle do I want to use? Do you think I want 105 or 43? Why 105? Because 105 is opposite the side that we know. Could I use it if it were 43? No, no because do I know that side? 
No. And can you solve a proportion if you have two variables in it? No. no. So I'm going to say sine 32 equals at, or over x equals sine 105 over 18. How do you solve a proportion? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. So what am I going to do? Sine 32 times 18 is equal to sine 105 times x. Okay, on your calculators, sine 32 times 18 is what? 9.5. And then what's sine 105? Change it to classic mode. Hit mode, which is on next to the second button, and change it to classic. Sign 105. 0 0.96. I'm going to round it to 0 0.97. Sign 105. That's all you're doing is sign 105. Because x is my variable, so there's nothing I can do there. So sign 105 is equal to 0 0.97. How would I finish this problem then? The last thing you would need to do would be divide by what? 0 0.97. So I'm going to do 9.5 divided by 0 0.97. Good. So DF is equal to 9.8, or whatever Louise said. All right. So X is equal to 9.8. What the law of sines allows you to do is every other triangle we've been able to solve so far has been a right triangle. Is this a right triangle? No. no. It's just a triangle. But because the law of sines does that whole thing where it draws an altitude and then creates a ratio and all the work that we did on the last two slides that I said you don't really need to know, but that's where it comes from. Now, all of a sudden, I don't care if it's a right triangle. I can use the law of sines to figure out missing pieces, even if it's not a right triangle. Luis. What? Oh, okay. Hold that thought. I think you're ready for lunch. All right. So we can also use this to find an angle. We can also use this to find an angle. Think back, though, when we're finding an angle, ultimately we're probably going to have to use the inverse of sine. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you're looking for an angle, you have to use the inverse. So I want to find angle S. So I'm going to mark it. Can anybody help me set up my proportion? Yes. What would my proportion be here? Five. Which one is opposite 5? S. S. So I'm going to say sine of S over 5, because that's opposite the 5, is equal to what? Sine 75 over 7. Good. Why? Those are the ones that are opposite. So sine always has to be of the angle, and then you put the side on the bottom, and S is opposite 5, which is why we did sine S over 5. And now all we're going to do here is cross multiply. So first I multiply this, and what does that give me? Yeah, 7 times sine S or sine S times 7. All right, I can't simplify that anymore because sine S is a variable. All right, and then what does this give me? 4.8. 5 times sine 75, which your F is what? 4.8, you said? Yes. All right, so 4.8 is equal to 7 times sine S. And again, you can do this in one step. You don't have to write that out if you don't want to. All right, what would I do next? Divide, divide by what? 7. So I do 4.8 divided by 7. And that gives me, and then how do I do this? How do I do this part? The opposite of what? The opposite of sine, which is what? So I'm going to do sine negative 1 of 0 0.68.
What? Yes, there is a lot going on in these problems, right? So the first part is, can you set up the proportion? The second part is, can you solve the proportion? It's important to me that you are able to do both, but I want to make sure that you can do each part. So for your practice, what I would like you guys to do is right now just do 1 and 9. And at your boards, I just want you to set up the proportion. Don't do the proportions. Just set up the proportions for 1 and 9 at your board. OK, go try those. OK, so let's talk about then, once you've set up those proportions, how to solve them. So we are going to do number one together. And then you guys are going to do the other ones at your board. All right, so number one, what was the proportion that you ended up setting up for number one? Where, I don't see a 40 anywhere. Where'd you get that, Ashley? No, I don't disagree. You need the 40, but where did the 40 come from? Good. OK, so when you subtract it from 180, you fill that in and you got 40. Do you have to do that step? Yes. yes. In this case, you do. Why do you need that one here? Because that's the side that's opposite the 20. Or sorry, that's the angle that's opposite the side that you know. OK, where am I putting my x? My x on AC. So what angle goes with x? 22, because it's opposite of that. So your proportion ended up being sine 40 over 24 equals sine 22 over x. OK, could you have done it flipped? Yes. It doesn't really matter as long as your signs go with the angles and your sides are on the bottom. OK, now what do we do for the actual math? Cross multiply, so I get what on the left? Good x times sin 40 or sin 40 times x. And then what do you get on the other side? 8.9. 24 times sine 22 equals 8.9. And then what do you do? Divide both sides by sine 40. And what would x be? You did not do that at your boards right now. You no, you weren't supposed to. 13.8. All right, so that's the side. Why did we not have to use the inverse? You're looking for a side. When would you use the inverse? If you're looking for an angle. So like in number nine, where you ended up with like sine E over eight, then you'd have to do an angle. OK, do any two of the ones that are left. If you already did nine, that's fine. You can use the proportion you've already done. But you, there's three. Well, we did number one. And I said you didn't solve number nine, so you can do number nine. So do any two between two, nine, and 10. Go. 
Any two.